This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, now let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Venkat Ramana, basically. So a few people call me Venkat, few people call me Ramana. So in the family, known by a name called as Ramana, but in the outside world, so I'm known by a world called as a Venkat. <laughs> Closely uh, been working almost 20 years into the infrastructure side. Okay. Uh, into the talk about Microsoft platforms, into virtualization platforms, into cloud platforms, but uh, not much into the nowadays into operations. Okay, where we talk about like an into day to day operations, I'll be more into the, the solutioning and uh, into the architecting of these solutions, and that's where my strength and probably. Uh, whatever the data center components we have it i would say that i've touched based everything uh, and um, we will at least i can talk okay i can understand what other people are talking from an, a different perspective from a security or from a network or from a microsoft or a virtualization or a backup or whatever we talk about it okay. uh, that's the, the just a brief about me okay as I was talking about uh, talking with Kapil yesterday, uh, as uh, to basically to refresh the uh, vSphere before we go into the NSXT. So uh, one thing I would like to convey is, in, um, so generally I'm a bit a slow guy, so I don't run fast uh, because uh, sometimes I don't have a time limits that i have to finish the course in two weeks or three weeks of time but i whenever i deliver it but i want to deliver it in a quality way um, and make sure that you people understand it so even one week we are extending uh, it should be fine okay so but i'll will make sure that you people understand and these things but only my sincere request is that yes we all will be busy with the day-to-day -day schedule okay and family one side office other side friends other side okay but at least you have to spend some one hour of time on the labs okay, on a daily basis so as this will be in weekend sessions so maybe by the time next week we come to the class if you can just practice two to three times of the same exercise then i would say that uh, uh, you can talk about the NSX, you, know, you can implement and manage NSX, but as we all know, the troubleshooting of any product requires a real-time okay, uh, system. So, so once we go into the real-time, then we start basically knowing the uh, troubleshooting system. Okay, so many of the, the I would say, uh, the the aspirants who are basically willing to learn some technology comes to me and says that I want to become an L3. Can I become an expert by learning these things? I say that no. Can I pass an exam by listening to your class? I say no. Okay, so it needs a lot of preparation. Okay, it needs a lot of things. Okay, uh, but yes, um, happy to basically say that there are so many basically, I would say, a friends who comes back and say that can you please deliver this for us okay or, uh, for me like these things okay and when such kind of things comes i'll be the happy person okay uh, in this class we see a mozi okay so it's been part of many years with my basically sessions okay so okay yeah so that's yeah. the yeah. yeah, thank you, Venkat. Um, almost, I think, uh, eight, nine years I'm <laughs> with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Started with, uh, you know, we realize uh, the VCPR, CCNA, NSX. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I learned ev almost everything from you, and I'm really happy. Appreciate yeah. that. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mazi. Yeah. <clears throat> so today, uh, 
So I have uh, uh, generally, uh, I'm not sure uh, many people like it or not like it. Uh, generally, I use PPT for reference, but most of the times I use Notepad and PPT for basically <clears throat> the lectures. So I don't walk through the, the PPTs, uh, reading PPTs or anything. Basically, I use PPTs for or paint for designing the and when I'm explaining something that makes people to focus rather than uh, using the, the pre available diagrams. Okay. So yes, whenever uh, I'm not audible or I'm not clear, uh, please you can stop me and you can ask me. I'm happy to basically answer patiently. Okay. Yeah, today uh, for the benefit of everyone. Okay, um, so we'll talk about the the virtualization. We'll talk about the VMware vSphere. vSphere. Then we talk about the, the basically the installation and the basic configuration of vSphere. Then we'll talk about the the virtual machines. Uh, basically, a few things to understand. Maybe we'll talk about uh, vCenter. Uh, then we'll talk about the virtual machines. Okay. Uh, as this is not going to be a very detailed session of a virtualization, I'm going to make you comfortable in understanding the uh, terminologies, make you to understand how the system works, everything. But there could be a lot of features which are available, which we don't talk about all those things. So we talk about virtual machines, then we talk about the, the, the templates, we can call it as a virtual machine templates, or we can call it as in the virtual appliances. I will call a terminology called as in a virtual appliances. There's a big difference between, because these are some terminologies which essentially required. Tomorrow, we'll talk about completely a vSphere networking, and this is the very core for the NSX. So to, tomorrow, totally, we'll spend on the vSphere network. Then we'll understand vSphere, probably the, the clusters. What does it mean by it, the clusters? Okay, so these are all what we're going to learn for today and tomorrow. Okay, yeah. yeah. So when we look at virtualization, so it's a simple, but a lot of people get confused in terms of understanding it, but I'll not spend much time in getting you bored of certain things. So we generally see in a physical server. So this is a physical server. So on a physical, so generally either it could be from Dell and IBM or an HP or an a Cisco server, anything it could be. So earlier what we used to do on this physical server, we used to deploy an, an operating system. So this is our operating system. So this could be like Windows, Common Linux, operating systems. So on top of this, so we used to deploy applications. Like could be like, I would say SAP or could be a SQL, could be a Oracle, could be whatever you talk like in web logic or uh, any application. So we used to deploy on a single server. So we have a physical server on top of that an operating system on top of that applications. So what kind of challenges what we had with this vision basically? So the model is in so one application, one server, one application. There were so many questions around why can't we put multiple applications on a one single server? Yes, small organizations will still do that. I would say they put uh, two or three applications on a one single server because of the cost and everything. But when we go to the 
and medium sized and above organizations they don't prefer to basically keep a multiple applications on one single server the reason behind it is and so whenever we do a maintenance activity on the operating system so the both the applications will go down so the both the applications will have a, a downtime so now if, if this application is being used by a different customer if this application is being used by a different customer now getting a downtime from a customer is very difficult because both are, have a two different business requirements so now a different set of users and different set of users so what happens in this case whenever we want to do any kind of a maintenance on the operating system or any impact on the operating system there is an impact on these two applications so to avoid that so we started keeping one application to one server and uh, uh, one application to the one server so which is basically linked to too many servers in the data center primarily thing is basically the the larger time i would say long long time basically or a long time to deploy a server in dc so if you want to get a new server into a data center it would take roughly roughly around a minimum of one month time to three months to six months time also i've seen organizations where if i raise a request for a server now i may get it after six months of time because of the various processes in place various people are being involved in the system so various approvals are being required budgetary concerns are required some organizations so i would say a minimum of one month of time so it means that whenever we want to bring in any application then so maintenance challenges the physical maintenance which is going to consume power and i would say cooling a lot of other things which is required then this is a typically what we see now what is happening with virtualization so by virtualization <clears throat> Uh, is the same yeah yeah sorry to interrupt, uh, but in this case i mean these physical servers are these physical servers which have only one operating system and one application that serving one application they can be considered as a bare metal server or the terminology or the term which is used for these servers is a bare metal server this is what we call as a bare metal server yes you can call that as a, you can call that as a bare metal server okay okay all right thank you right right so we have a physical server so this fair physical server we used to call it as a bare metal server there is another terminology instead of calling a physical server they call a bare metal server so in general terminology a bare metal server is nothing but basically a server which can be used for multiple purposes so if this is ideal basically i can remove operating system i can put a different operating system like that question basically a physical server is being called as a bare metal server in the uh, general data center terminologies right so what has happened with this now so i'm just going to the virtualization so a physical server on a bare metal server they bought a product or i would say called as a concept called as a virtualization operating system so there is a new operating system came into picture which is called as a virtualization operating system when i say new nothing new so basically people have took the linux operating system removed all the unnecessary components 
kept only the virtualization components. So we use maybe I see people you might be compare uh, you might be aware of the ways to call Cisco IOS Cisco ne Nexus. We call these two our operating systems, right? So we call Cisco IOS and Cisco Nexus. Now Cisco IOS basically when you go into a router, it's basically Linux. On top of that, basically we see in and whatever the switching or a routing or whatever your firewall security, whatever these things. So whenever I want to manage a switch or configure a router or a firewall or anything, so we used to interact with the Cisco, the iOS operating system. So basically the Cisco has took the Linux and basically modified every, they removed everything, whatever they don't need it, they kept only, you no. Know, so we use Linux only for booting purpose. The rest of everything, once the, the necessary application is being loaded, it start functioning like a necessary one. S similarly here, so majority of the people basically what they did is and they took the Linux, removed the, all the unnecessary components, they built a virtualization and component and made it as part of the Linux. Made it as part of the Linux. Similarly, Microsoft, Windows. So they are using the Windows operating system. On top of that, they built a component called as an Hyper V. They built a component called as an Hyper V. So that Hyper V is more of like an a virtualization application. So this virtualization is basically an application which is part of the operating system itself. So many vendors came into picture. Like VMware, the basically the guy or the product company which basically came up with a virtualization at the very initial, the first we can say call it as an so they called as in initially they were calling it as in virtual infrastructure. This is to call virtual infrastructure that is VI, the product name. So till 3.0 version, they used to call VI. In 4.0, they were calling vSphere. They're calling vSphere. And later point of time, once the, the VI 3.x is the, where VMware is known to the world. So that is the, I would say, the 2007, 2008 year. That's where the VI came into picture, three. And that's where the VMware is known to the world of using the virtualization. Similarly, when we go to the Citrix, they had Citrix Zen desktop, sorry, Zen server. Similarly, Red Hat, KVM. But like this, so many vendors came into picture. It is a simple that by using the, the Linux and open source virtualization came into picture, like Zen, everybody started taking the, the KVM and Zen open source wipe virus and they started naming their own products like Linux. So we call Red Hat Linux, Oracle Linux, Susi Linux, Debian Linux, okay? They're all coming from the base Linux and they're being customized. Each and every organization has been stabilized it and they're basically selling it on their own. Similarly, the virtualization has become like that, okay? So this virtualization software came into picture and predominantly everywhere we started using the VMware and Till is the, the leader in that position. So, so majority of the companies started adopting that, but yes, slowly Microsoft geared up and to a certain level, they basically captured the market, but our Till we see that VMware as the, the leader in terms of the virtualization. So 
the virtualization operating system. They bought into virtualization operating system. So what this virtualization operating system started doing, this operating system started managing the, the physical hardware. Uh, uh, Venkat, one question. Yeah, please. Just to confirm, I mean, are these virtualization software such as VI, Zen server or KVM, can these be called as a terminology uh, hypervisors? Are these uh, called as yes. hypervisor or hypervisor is something else? Yes, you are right. They are called as an hypervisors. So this is just a software, the operating system of that particular VMware for Citrix, Zen server is the hypervisor and for Red Hat, KVM is the hypervisor, right? Exactly. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. So we these are uh, basically the terminology we call as an hypervisors. Okay. So what this virtualization operating system hypervisors they're calling it as they they basically started managing the physical hardware. So as they are sitting on the the physical hardware directly. So the virtualization will manage the physical processor, physical memory, the physical disk, physical network card. In this case, the operating system is going to manage the physical hardware. Whatever the hardware which is existing, the processor or a memory or an, a disk or network. So predominantly we see four or five. One is a graphics card, one is a network, one is a uh, disk storage and the processor and the memory. We see the five primary components. So in this case, the operating system is going to control all this. But when we come to the virtualization hypervisors, so the hypervisor is nothing but the virtualization software is going to control, manage the physical hardware devices. Now, what is the benefit the virtualization software operating system is providing? So on top of this, as this is a software, it is allows us to create an what we call this in a virtual machine. The virtual machine is a software machine. It is not a physical machine. Which exactly functions, functions like a physical machine. A machine. but created by the virtualization operating system. So what will have? It will have a virtual processor. Whatever we call it as in the physical machine, whatever it has in a processor, a memory, a disk or a network card. Okay. Or basically you call it a graphics card. Okay. USB ports parallel ports, okay? Whatever you talk about a physical machine, a CD-ROM drive or a DVD drive, etc., etc. okay? Exactly, it has the same. So it is an emulator, what we call a simulation, we can call it as. So it is a software-based machine. So this exactly functions like a physical machine. What is the advantage of this one? I create multiple virtual machines on one single physical server. So one single physical server running in a virtualization operating system. So on, by using the virtualization software, we are creating a multiple virtual machine. Each and every virtual machine will have its 
its own operating system. It will have its own network card. It will have its own desk. It will have its own whatever the virtual processor. We can call it as a like these things. So now what happens here now? So I can have a Windows, Linux, Windows operating system like this. It is not that I need to run the same operating system on all the virtual machines. So that's where each and every virtual machine can have its own operating system and applications. So, so what happened here now? This entire thing, whatever we call it as an Is become a virtual machine. So instead of a physical server, we are getting a virtual machine with virtual hardware. So on top of that, we are having an operating system. On top of that, we are having an application. So the entire physical server has been converted as a virtual machine. <sighs> So what benefits we are seeing from this one? Now, if you want to get a new server in the data center, does it going to take time or I can deploy immediately by using this technology? So I just need a machine, virtual machine. The virtual machine is acting like a server. That's a virtual server. Let's say one of the project requires an one of the project requires, let's say, the SAP application requires a server with and a two processors with 8 GB RAM, with an 100 GB of hard disk space, okay, with basically a NIC card of one gig. I simply go and create a virtual machine. That's it. So it matter of. 15 20 minutes of time we have a server up and running in the data center and what is the other benefits of that so in these years if i want to upgrade the hardware it is a nightmare i have to check whether the hardware is compatible let's say that i want to upgrade the memory i have to check whether the memory is available or not whether i can uh, whether the slots are available to increase the capacity or not. So then I have to check if I want to add more disk capacity, I need to check whether the slots are available to insert the disks. Whereas in this case of virtualization, whenever we want to upgrade a capacity, we can upgrade it. So as of now, it is running an 8 GB RAM. I want to upgrade it to the 16 GB RAM. With a simple right click and edit it, I can basically add the RAM. So I can basically manage the hardware resources easily. Manage the hardware resources easily. So I want to increase the number of processors, I increase it on these virtual machines. That's where the, I would say the world has seen the benefit of virtualization. So and we started creating everything virtualization a couple of questions here uh, yeah sorry to interrupt. Yeah. yeah sure no problem uh, my my perception was uh virtualization operating system which is hypervisor hypervisor is the host operating system and on that whatever virtual machine you create for example virtual machine one you created on the very left so that yes. can have a different guest operating system for example that was my perception so one can yes. have Windows, the other virtual machine can have uh, uh, Linux as a guest operating system. And the third one may have some some else, uh, something else operating system. So is it possible or all the uh, VMs or all the VMs uh, who are hosting or who are having their guest operating system should be identical or same? No, as I said earlier, each and every virtual machine can have its own operating system. Okay, guest operating system can be different. Different. Okay, this is a Windows. This can be Linux. This can be Solaris. Okay, okay. like this. 
you can have a combination of anything okay and other than that for example this physical server which is on at the bottom you mentioned dell ip ibm hp cisco mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. the perception just want to clear if mm -hmm. this server have 64 cores uh, of cpu so mm -hmm. it can uh, it can uh, offer eight core to the first virtual machine it can offer 16 core to the second virtual machine and if that is not needed if server team comes to me and say we they no more need the uh, the server they can decommission and those eight cores or 16 cores whatever consumed by the server that uh, the RAM and the space that can be given back to the physical server so is that per perception correct correct it is correct okay and but it has a vnic actually that is called uh, also yeah. i mean you have not yes, started but mm -hmm. uh, Unique and VMNIC, the difference you tell either today or tomorrow because we have. Some yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Right. Right. Okay, Trishi here. Sorry to bother you. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to continue uh, on, on the call Kapil has said. So we always, as, as a network person, as, as always heard that uh, that we are launching a firewall on a VM, we are launching a, C a Cisco router on a VM. So is this the same thing as you said that on first machine we can have a Linux, on second we can have a Cisco, or third we can have a firewall by launching a iOS on the second machine and on launching a firewall operating system on the third machine. Exactly, you're right. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So each and every virtual machine, this is your router. Okay. So this is your firewall. This is your application gateway. This is your load balancer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the virtual machine has its own operating system. Okay, based on the vendor to vendor. Mostly uh, all these security products and network products we came, we see they come from a Linux back the ground. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on top of that, the respect to uh, operating system and application is there. For a switching, switching mm -hmm. application, for a router, routing application, firewall, firewall application. Then uh, we would see whatever load balancer, load balancer application, gateways, gateway mm -hmm. applications, like whatever it is. So we call now instead of a virtual machine, what we call this as a load balancer. Mm -hmm. Instead of virtual machine, we call this as a router. Correct. We call this as a firewall. Correct. Okay. So generally, we don't basically the firewall is being running as a virtual machine. The router virtual is running machine. as a virtual machine. So the mm -hmm. load balancer is running as a virtual machine. Correct. Okay, so that way so, it becomes uh, easy. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, yeah. So as we are all discussing about the uh, advantages, like, like we uh, Kapil has said that we have a flexibility. We can use these resources again, okay, to mm -hmm. another, uh, to create another uh, machine or to uh, to have some other, other purpose, okay. Mm -hmm. So, as we know there are there may be advantage and disadvantages so are you going to cover the disadvantage yeah, yeah. what you have here yeah. yeah yeah we'll cover hmm? okay thank you thank yeah you. uh sure. Praveen, yeah, yeah Praveen. uh on these virtual machines uh, uh we will able to only install the application part or we can able to install the storage as well storage database today everything has become virtual <laughs> okay whatever you talk in the data center everything is virtualized you okay. talk about a storage or a database or anything now you see software defined network software defined storage software mm -hmm. defined data center what are these things all virtualized right a tape library is also virtualized Okay, mm -hmm. a tape library is virtualized. So we have okay. seen backup people are basically uh, taking the tapes out, removing tapes. These are physical mm -hmm. ones, right? Okay. Right, right. Which they day day and day out they do keep doing. They are being virtualized. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. every I would say that everything is virtualized. Okay. Okay. Whatever is required for the industry as of today in the data center, everything is being virtualized. 
and if <laughs> somebody is not there in the virtualization his product will not exist <laughs> that's it <laughs> okay okay so, so now when, when earlier, you... earlier, yeah to give you earlier you might be people aware of like van components right sd van like and van optimizers and everything mm -hmm. right so today they're all virtualized that's it right yeah and what is this uh esxi yeah i'll come to that i'll come to that hmm? okay we'll talk about it when we go okay, to the, a bit of b sphere then we'll understand it hmm? okay thank you yeah, yeah. So what is happens here is then I'll so so like each and every server server deployment is takes very less time and one is an easy to manage so I would say easy to manage so I can shut down the virtual machine power on the virtual machine change the hardware settings basically so we call as an easy to scale scale up or scale out okay that's a one of the a virtual machine running windows operating system and application okay. is consuming processors of 100 100 percent cpu utilization now the application is very slow so on the fly i can add more number of processors i can upgrade the server on the fly without shutting down the virtual machine I can increase the number of processors from a four to eight. That's that's the the beautiness of this virtualization technology. So easy to scale up and scale out. Okay, and basically manages the or uh, effective utilization of resources. So effective utilization of resources means. So what I mean by effective utilization of resources, now what happens in this case, if you have a hundred physical servers, all the hundred servers may not be using the, the, the full capacity of the resources. One server might be using only a 10% of the processor, another server might be using only 20% of the processor, another server might be using only 5% of the processor, but you would see that a lot of hard, the physical resources are getting wasted. So I have a 128 GB of RAM on this physical server, but I'm using only 32 GB RAM. So application is using 120, only 32 GB RAM, but another 70 GB or 100 GB of RAM is going waste. What is happens with the virtualization? You create more number of virtual machines. Okay, you still see that the physical processor is not consuming up to the mark and you still see that the physical memory is having is idle you can add more machines that's it so instead of buying an, another physical server you basically buy another one uh, you create another virtual machines okay so i'll come to that how the resources will be shared managed by the vsphere but in a general okay the, the better utilization of resources, what we can call as it. Okay. So as we see, there is a capacity, we can add it. Okay. So with that, what happens is then it consumes a less space in the data centers. The only thing is then what made a difference is then earlier, we used to have too many servers with less configuration. Less configuration. It means that I have a servers with a two processor with eight GB RAM, or like in four processors with sixteen GB RAM. Like there are so many servers. But once virtualization came into picture, the whole scenario got changed. That less number of physical servers with higher capacity, with higher capacity. So here we are talking like in 64 processors with 512 GB of RAM. We are talking about 128 processors with one TB or a two TB of RAM. So what happened here is in the all together, the number of here, if I'm using a hundred physical servers, small servers, I bought it to the six to seven physical servers. 
but the server capacity got increased. That's it. Here, the capacity of the hardware capacity is less, but here the hardware capacity is very huge because as and when required, we can create virtual machines. We can create virtual machines. Uh, one question here. Yeah, please. For example, this ESXi host or this the entire server, the physical server we can see. All of a sudden, due to some hardware failure or some issues or some power mm. issues, it, it goes down. Mm. So how long it takes for all these virtual machines with all their data to bring up on a different uh, uh, physical server or the ESXi host? How long yeah. it takes to bring up? Generally, we have a cluster. Okay, so there are two different features available. One feature test says that it hardly takes a two seconds. Okay, in two seconds of time, the machine is up and running on the other physical server. That is one feature. There is another feature called as and we call, which would take roughly around a maximum of, I would say, five minutes of time to bring the server, the virtual machine up and running. Okay, so, but yes, uh, the two seconds or whatever we say, call it as in five seconds maximum of time where it would take to bring the application up and running on the other one, the user doesn't see any disconnectivity. Even if he's in the middle of session somewhere, his session also doesn't get disconnected. Let's say transaction, let's say someone logged into the banking application is doing some transfer, but the physical server goes down, his transaction doesn't get canceled. Yeah, it all, but it consumes a lot of resources. So, but that's how the virtualization is matured. Because first question comes to any organization, hey, what happens to the physical server? So earlier, if my physical server is going down, only one application is going down, correct? Correct. Now here, if one physical server goes down, I have 100 virtual machines. Now 100 applications will go down. So how do I minimize that? That is where there are clusters. Tomorrow I'll brief you about those clusters. What are those things? Okay. 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 Right. So this is a generic, what we call as a virtualization concept. Now, in a terminological way, this is called as a, um, a bare metal server, or it is called as an, a physical server, physical a server, or it is called as a host server, host server. This is called as an hypervisor or host operating system. So what host operating system is running on this one? Is it SXI? Is it in uh, uh, Microsoft Windows Hyper-V or is it a Citrix? Uh, uh, Zen or uh, Red Hat KVM or what is that hyper host operating system? So we call this as a host operating system or an hypervisor. Now these things we call a guest OS in a terminology what we use called as a guest OS and guest application. So we call an application, but and sometimes people call it as an, a guest. So people refer to a server. Server means I'm saying SAP server. Then we call like this, right? We call like an a Oracle server. We don't call Oracle virtual machine. We don't call SQL virtual machine. We call like a SQL server, like in a web server. Like generally people will call like this. So nothing but, so these applications are running on your virtual machines. 
okay so referring to that particular one each and every virtual machine will have its own ip address each and every virtual machine will have a nick each and every virtual machine it has a disk each and every virtual machine it has its own operating system so if one virtual machine has an impact it doesn't impact other virtual machines so if i'm doing a patch management on this virtual machine it only this virtual machine is impacted only this application is impacted other virtual machines sitting on the same hypervisor will not be impacted okay so that's the what we see called as a the general virtual you take any virtualization product either microsoft hype uh, hyper-v product or you take uh, a VMware vSphere, you take Red Hat, you take Zetrix, you take uh, any other uh, hypervisor products or virtualization products. They are the the concept is similar here till here. It is a generic. So every virtualization provider will have their own operating system. On top of that, they allow us to create a virtual machines and allow us to deploy the operating system, run applications. On top of that all these hypervisors will manage this once right now let's go to the vmware vSphere so vmware vSphere is basically a virtualization product suit or it's a product suit it's not a single product it's not a single product it is a suit actually okay so as part of this VMware vSphere, there are various products available. One is a VMware vSphere ESXi. This is an hypervisor operating system. Operating system that is virtualization operating system. So, uh, when cut a uh, uh, small query here. So, mm -hmm. based on my uh, what I've heard so far, virtualization operating system that is hypervisor is so robust that uh, usually uh, nothing happens to the host operating system uh, in, in, in production or in working condition. It is robust and considered to be the best operating system, over, uh, and nothing happens as uh, the things happen to Microsoft uh, Windows. So that kind of uh, buggy behavior is not there for hypervisor. Is that true? Uh, see, still, uh, I would not say 100% uh, uh, it is robust. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, I would say that, like, okay, you have a Cisco router. We say it is rugged, right? Yeah. You configure once, leave it for years, right? It runs. Yeah, long, but yeah. still, we'll still see somewhere a point that there is some uh, a problem with the product right somewhere but percentage of occurrence of that issue is very less correct correct similarly here also yes they are basically uh, as far as the esxi considered it is the most uh, i would say reliable product uh, the the percentage of occurring problems or facing problems is less compared to the other virtualization products. Okay, okay. so they built it a robust. We can say call it as in. Okay, the only advantage of this one is then it doesn't have anything else apart from the virtualization software. Got it. It's... Yeah. Okay. Right. So this VMware vSphere ESXi, it is a hypervisor. It is an operating system. Now my question comes, in this diagram, is the ESXi will be available inside a virtual machine or here? On virtualization operating system. Virtualization it's operating system. It's the host operating system and it will be there directly on the physical server. It won't be there in the virtual machine. Exactly. So the virtual machine, they have their guest operating system. Exactly. So what happens here now? So the ESXi server, basically we call the ESX operating system, is a host operating system. 
installs directly installs directly on physical physical so, server uh, one question venkat whenever yeah. we are talking about the hypervisor uh, uh, the virtualization of uh, hypervisor then it is nothing but the vmware vsphere esxi right yes in case of if we are using a vmware product okay we are using the vmware they are using okay. in case of in case of red hat they call kvm okay so different different vendor having different different naming convention naming conventions okay okay but the working methodology is will be the same same okay see uh, it's a simple now you have juniper product and you have a cisco product mm -hmm. the functionality is the same right only the, uh, the interaction and operating is bit different correct they call it and uh, yeah. cisco call it cisco iOS. So yeah. Zen server, Citrix call it Zen server, their operating system, and VMware mm -hmm. call it hypervisor. Microsoft call it Hyper-V. Yes, exactly. Ah, got it. Okay. So they those products are they labeled as individual, individual. So what VMware labeled it as an ESXi. They call ESXi. So it installs directly on the physical server, and basically it just manages the hardware. So we have just question. Uh, yeah, please. We spare, we spare we are getting this ESXi, right? So in yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a suit, and that in that suit I am getting this ESXi as a uh, one of the uh, application, right? Means right. to use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now this part is the hardware resources, and basically allows to create create virtual machines and provide hardware resources to the virtual machines physical hardware now many people get confused now where does this virtual hard disk is coming from again it has to come from a physical disk where does a processor is coming for this virtual machine the virtual processor will get from the physical processor the virtual memory will get from the physical memory. The virtual disk will get from the physical disk. Virtual NIC will get from the physical NIC. So the vSphere ESXi is going to basically manage all these things, provide hardware resources to the virtual machines. Now, let's go to a simple example. So I have an like this 10 ESXi server. So we call now, we don't call physical server now. What are we calling this one? ESXi servers. ESXi host, sorry, ESXi host. Awesome. Yes, so in general terminology, I'm calling as an ESXi server, ESXi server, ESXi server. So ESXi server is nothing but a physical server host. So ESXi, 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 ESXi. So, so when you get ESXi, I mean, uh, you are talking about hypervisor, right? So these are, yes. these are, uh, okay. So so these one are the, question. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, no. So ESXi no, is just... actually the chassis and uh, it has hypervisor operating, uh, host operating system. Yes, ESXi hypervisor we call it as per my understanding. This ESXi, ESXi chassis is made by the VMware or it can be made by any vendor? It can be Dell, it can be IBM, it can be HP, it can be Cisco. Okay, okay, okay. It it should meet the specification, that's the requirement. Yes, it can it can basically work on any it is in uh, hardware independent platform. Okay, okay. So any hardware, but we are using the hypervisor, okay, as a uh, virtualization operating system. Uh, so we called it as an EXXI. Exactly. Okay. Okay, as far as VMware is concerned, we call that as an ESXI. Okay. Right, clear so far? Yes, very much clear. Yes. Okay, yes. right. Now, I, I have one question for you people. You have a 200 switches. 
and uh, you want to manage center link. Now, if you don't have a centralized management software, what challenges we would see? So we have to log in into the switch. You have to log in each and every switch, and everything configurations will be much difficult, right? Yeah, manual right. configuration would be difficult. Error, uh, I mean, human error, possibility of human error. Yes, uh, there are so many things. Correct, exactly. The monitoring, everything will be a problem, right? Correct. Right. Correct. So now what? The VMA brought a call to send. There's an application called as a vCenter application. It's called as a VMware vSphere vCenter or we call it as a vCenter. So this is an application which can run on Linux or Windows operating system. Okay, this is a, and just an application. So in order to install this application, we need to have a Linux or a Windows operating system. Now, what is this product? This product allows to manage multiple ESX servers. Allows to manage multiple ESX servers. Now, if you want to create a virtual machine on one of the ESX server, <clears throat> there are two ways. Let's say I want to create a virtual machine on this one. So one option is then I directly log into this machine host and create a virtual machine. But I go to the vCenter and I create a virtual machine. Now let's say tomorrow new administrator came into picture. Now like this, I have an, a 300 ESX servers. If you have to provide, you have to provide him access to the 300 ESX servers. I have to create a user account in each and every ESX, correct? If I provide him access to the vCenter, do I need to create a user account in ESX servers? No. no. So the vCenter is an, a centralized management application. I'm making it very clear. It is an application. It is not an operating system. So it is installed on top of a Linux or a Windows machine. This can sit either in a physical server or a virtual machine. So is it is it kind of a controller? Yes, we call it is a controller. You can call it as a controller. Okay. Uh, we get one question here. Uh, no. So so. This ESX server, right? So, yeah. can it be ESX server with a different host server other than VM machine? Means, no, this is uh, a physical. I, 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 this is a physical server, right? Right. So this is a physical server, right? And I right. am having one uh, physical server. I am um, having, you know, a hypervisor on that, right? And yeah, uh, uh, yeah. but 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 I am having different physical server. And uh, I mean that, and we, which will be having virtual host, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm just my query is ESXi and uh, VMs, right? Should be onto single host, host server, right? Single physical uh, server. Yes. So on top of this one, you have virtual machines. Yeah. Okay. It okay. It has to be Hello. into one host server. <laughs> Yeah, when yeah. Uh, can we configure hello can we configure this uh, v center in one of this exxi hypervisor yes that's what as a virtual machine as a virtual machine we can configure no? in one of yes. the exxi yes, and we exactly. can handle all the exxi exactly okay we can configure on the one of the vm or we can keep it as a separate physical machine as well right Yes, exactly. So either of the case, either okay. you can keep that as a physical server or any virtual machine. Okay, got it. So initially we were keeping that as a separate and physical servers. Slowly as the product got matured, came up with multiple features and availability features, then we started keeping this 
we send her also into the virtual machine uh, into the virtual machine okay now what is this application name we are calling v center so what this v center we allows us to do is it is a management and controller application management application that's it now if this if this machine goes down is there any impact on these e servers no it shouldn't no. be no the no. so only so virtual machines can would stop the virtual machines will continue to run yes access servers will continue to run but we cannot perform administration activities like you cannot create a virtual machine delete a virtual machine power on a virtual machine power off a virtual machine create a virtual switch or create vds switch whatever administrative activities you cannot perform but a virtual machine which is already running on the yes access server does it has any impact It doesn't no. has any impact. No. No, no, no impact. So, impact. Yes, no. This is a management product. Okay. The most of the features they built around this one. The clusters, the whatever we call it as in like in uh, cloning templates. There are so many features available. They all built on top of this particular one. Okay. So now we have administrators so we have administrators the administrators can interact with the v center the administrators can interact with the esxi but the administrator can interact with esxi only when he is not able to access this ESX server through vCenter. For some reasons, the ESX server is not working with vCenter, then the administrator will go to the ESXi and troubleshoot it. As long as the, the ESX server is available under the vCenter, the always the administrator will be managing through the vCenter. Are we clear so, on the V Center product? Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so so Venket, uh, in V Center basically is a management console when from where I can manage ESXi. So if I want to create uh, one VM, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So ultimately I need to create through ESXi, right? So what that no. I will do through? No, no. Um, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I was just uh, think so. Ultimately, I need to log into VM cent uh, V Center, and through that I can. Um, manage esxi and i can create a vm yes exactly creation deletion everything is possible through vcenter yes uh, okay so, okay everything is there at vcenter the features which are not available at esxi server are available at vcenter so vcenter will be mostly you 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 mentioned right it it, it can be a, it can be vm into means uh, it can be a, a different server or it can be a vm into the same one of the esxi yes it's an actually application which we can host on any either bare metal server we can host it or we can host it in a virtual machine on one of the esxi host if yes. one esxi host have 10 vm we can have a uh, vcenter in one of the VM. vms uh, okay. It's okay. a server related question I'm asking, but yeah. uh, what is the difference between 6.5, 6.7, and 7.0 nowadays? It is like, a, like... there are uh, maybe, uh, okay, uh, sorry for VCS that. Maybe if, if, even if I explain until you know the product features, you will not see the okay. difference. <laughs> okay. okay, no worries. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, some, sometimes. Uh, yeah, until we know what is ESXi and what is the feature, if I tell the difference, also it, it goes above the head. Okay, <laughs> give me two minutes, I'll be back now. Yeah, Kapil, uh, thanks a lot, by the way. Okay, to wake me up. I mean I hope uh, for everyone it is making sense that things are uh, 
I mean, hope everyone is grasping the thing. Yes, yes. Yes, Kapil. Yes, yes Kapil. Hey, Kapil. Okay. These these were the doubts in my mind since last seven eight years. Uh, okay. It is, it is getting <laughs> terrified now. Yeah. Right. Right. Because Indeed, you, uh, not dis you, you should discuss with me now, nah, Praveen. Yes. No, I just a moti enoti pay je. Just a knowledge na to pay je. You order kamy pay je utari. Okay. Expert level thena to pay je to mala. L1, L2 level. Admin level. Ha, L1, L2. Session recording chalu hai. Session is being recorded. No worries. Wait, Kapil. Uh, so, are we getting this recording session? Means I will just forget to ask. Yes, 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 yes. We would, we would be having access to these sessions. Uh, do we have Rahul Bangera? Has Rahul joined? No, I think he's having some issues in his okay. family. Okay. So he's not yet joined. So we can, he can see this recording. Harish. Today. Uh, Harish and Rishi, uh, both of you, I'm asking. I mean, are you getting the things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Kapil, actually, I actually am a little bit already aware about this uh, VMware because yeah, I, be I, easy. Here I was a Windows engineer and then I shifted to Net, right? So, actually, I know something like, yeah, and concept because, yeah, because uh, in the data center, may, many times we are interacting with Windows team, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, yes, Kapil. Uh, even I can relate the things now. Uh, earlier, I used to follow up with the server team, VMware team. So yeah. I can easily uh, like connect the dots now. Yeah. yeah. And in a day or two, probably you will come to know how the virtual machine sent traffic to hypervisor and how that hypervisor sent traffic on the physical medium. That is our switch or uh, to the router, how the traffic gets routed or gets sent to the router. That we will come to know in a day or two, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have also noted out the question. Uh, but I am not going to ask now, okay, because it is not related to this topic. Like how the IP segregation is happening, virtual IP, physical IP. Okay, so how the physical and virtual NICs, uh, something bonding or teaming or something that they, they are doing inside the, the NIC switch, right? Yeah. yeah that yeah. I have. Yeah. They are virtual yeah. switch actually. Yeah. Virtual switch, yeah. yeah. A virtual switch. Yeah. And, and also, yeah. And virtual switch, so uh, we can give NIC. Like. Yeah. Also, I want to ask from network side whenever uh, we are activating, we are doing the trunk port, okay, and how they are configuring the VLAN at their side. Right, whenever we are oh. connecting the VM, VM or ESXi host, okay, we are uh, configuring that particular uh, interface as a trunk, right? Yeah, yeah. generally that trunk trunk port, uh, 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 which is uh, uh, on our switch, switch uh, is a trunk port, and that trunk port will connect to the ESXi, okay? And, uh, right. and in ESXi, then we can, uh, like same like network, we can have all VLANs, right? So in ESXi, right. Uh, there are multiple VMs, so you can assign uh, multiple uh, subnets IP. Like, like right, right, right. I think at uh, ESX site as, as well, they are configuring the VLANs, right? VLANs or the subnets. Those are called port groups. In our terminology, uh, we call it VLANs. In uh, uh, VM terminology, it is called port groups, and there is a virtual switch created. So, welcome, uh -huh. sir, will uh, guide us on that part. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now exactly. I would say consider hypervisors as a leap switches. In our terminology, consider hypervisor as a leap switch. Uh -huh. okay. Right. Sir, please continue. Good, good, sir. Yeah. Yes, yes. Fine. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So, the vCenter plays a key role. So, we interact with always a VMware called as a vCenter. Basically, it is an a management product, management component. Basically provides features like cloning, basically centralized administration of ESXi servers, ESXi and VMs. Network, so we call network and storage. 
right? Whatever we can manage using this particular one. So we have product called as a VMware Update Manager. So another product. So basically this is an, again an application which integrates with vCenter for patch management. For a patch management. So what is this patch management? You are basically talking about, let's say, on a monthly basis, we get some kind of an whatever uh, patches released by VMware. So we want to update all those things onto the SXL servers. Then we use this product called as a VMware Update Manager. Update Manager. So is it uh, inside the VMware vCenter or it's a different product to install on the different VM? Yeah, it is. We have, we can install this. We can install this on a separate machine mm -hmm. or on the vCenter itself. Okay. But okay. as a product, so, is a uh, so, 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 yeah. so I think Venkat, this, this, this is uh, coming ultimately in a, this vSphere suit, right? So yes, uh, that's what this is. is this, all, yeah. all are coming in, in this product suit. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it as a virtualization product suit. Okay. Okay. So now we have an, oh, sorry. And another product called as an web client. This is an application again. This can be installed on a separate machine server or on a vCenter server itself. Provides an, basically an, a web application to, to interact with a vCenter, perform administrative activities administrative activities so it is a web server it is a web server so that's a web it is a more of a web so we always interact with the web client so the web client will interact with the vcenter so where all the actions the information we keep in through the web client will go to the vcenter vcenter will communicate with the sxs server and give the instructions to the sxs server or perform the actions okay these are all your, what we call as, an, as a product suits, okay? So mostly the people will be using the 99.999 percent the center is required and update manager is an optional component and web client is a mandatory, okay? So by default, so as part of the vCenter, you get a web client. Default is going to install the web client. So when we install the vCenter, it is going to get the web client. So this all we call it as a vSphere product suite. So you might have frequently hearing a word called as a ESXi and vCenter, but you may not be hearing a word called as an update manager and web client. Okay, mm -hmm. this is our especially the web client is part of the vCenter. I would say, okay, there is a reason why people don't. Uh, explicitly call as a web client or web web web, but as an integral part of the vCenter, we do that. So, uh, vCenter and ESXi. Sorry, sir, I lost the question. Go ahead, Kapil. No, just I told Venkat uh, that mostly uh, a frequent uh, heard uh, terminologies or terms are vCenter. And ESXi host, that's it. Yes, that's it, yes. So uh, the vSphere uh, ESXi uh, mm -hmm. is the combination of, the, sorry, uh, VMware vSphere, okay, mm -hmm. uh, that is the suit uh, which is having a combination of module like ESXi, VMware vCenter, and within mm -hmm. VMware vCenter, we get a web client and the sometimes update, update manager if required. Yes, exactly. Okay, the four components. Yes. 
and most of the times we are concerned with uh, v center we have to log in into the v center and whatever yes. we do that to on uh, the ess for exactly. understanding yes mm -hmm. uh, one, one question here you know in just is not exactly of the vmware but when we see server team right so when when we we works right so server mm -hmm. team application team that only we know right so vmware have will be the team will be uh, managing only this 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 stuff right there will be different team called as vmware team or server team no, only does server team. no server team mm -hmm. you, you used to manage all these vmware servers so nowadays uh, these are managed by uh, the server team or vmware team is the same team and on those servers whatever applications are hosted uh, those applications are managed by a different team for my uh, correct, uh, correct yes yes correct correct okay because nowadays bare metal server hardly anybody use bare metal server that is single single server single operating system and single application that is hardly uh seen gone it all again depends on the organization to organization but uh, uh, as Kapil said, the most of the server team, like in Windows or Linux team, okay, will manage the vSphere platform. Okay, but there are some cases where we would see an organizations they don't allow the a Windows administrator to manage the vSphere. They don't allow the uh, basically a Linux guy to manage the vSphere. They just need to manage only the the guest voices. Okay, but, system, but that is very rare because of the governance regulations, governance requirements. So when get uh, one one thing, uh, the, uh, the servers like mainframes and uh, so, uh, you know, high capacity, right, big data. So mm -hmm. how how then this this comes into virtualization then? I, mean, uh, I just, uh, still mainframes are there, right? And are those, means how those will become uh, under virtualization? It's simple today the servers are with higher capacity mm -hmm. okay okay once upon time mainframe means it is a very high capacity correct yes yes today Cobalt, your x8 yeah. your x86 servers are coming up with very huge capacity can you imagine a server with a 5 tb of ram mm. no. now what else we need it okay, okay. correct okay. we yeah okay so 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 because mainframe so so it's ultimately so now mainframe also comes into the virtualizations as well yes and, they have virtualized uh, it mm. thanks thanks Vankar. yeah yeah right let's move on okay yeah please any questions so far and just to give you oh, now just a virtualization and vspr we are clear right on this what is vSphere and what is virtualization. And so let's move on to the uh, ESXi. Okay, so we'll look at the- uh, Venkat, uh, one last question. Sorry, we are asking too many questions. No, no problem. Uh, this uh, VMware Flare, okay. VMware is the vendor, okay, who uh, developed this particular OS, uh, the hypervisor, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, hmm. virtualization uh, OS okay hmm. uh, so this virtualization OS this hypervisor uh, OS this is getting utilized or useful only for the applications or we can use this flavor for the storage uh, or uh, other side well. you got my question uh, like can, we, mean... can we yeah. can we use this hypervisor uh, flavor hmm for the uh, storage or others as well like network storage yeah so when you mean by storage and networks means and oh. i'm just trying to so, understand uh, so Probably. i'm just thinking the storage is the one let's say if we are talking about from the esxa point okay at top side we have a vm okay at middle we have a virtualization os and below mm. the bare metal server right mm. Mm. Uh, so if I uh, thinking from the storage perspective, can I think uh, the virtual machine as a storage uh, under that uh, the hypervisor and uh, under that the physical server? Uh, you can, I think we can do the guest, guest guest virtual memory he's talking about. 
I think no, no. storage is a different, right? Where we storage have storage is a well, different thing. And for all hypervisors nowadays, I mean, there is a network file storage, hmm. uh, or right. storage is different uh, uh, device altogether. So, what kind of mm -hmm. operating system generally these storage have? That may be the question Venkat uh, yes. uh, Pravin yes. is having. So, what is the what is the operating system now on the compute no, no. servers? We have hypervisor. Now on the storage, what kind of operating system is there? Is a SAN storage different operating system, or uh, the storage also use hypervisor? That is the question probably. Yeah. Right. See, you are connecting a storage to the physical, right? Mm, right. There are, there are two different storages. One is an external storage. One is the internal storage. Mm -hmm. The internal storage is nothing but the disks which are directly comes to this physical server. We call it as the internal storage. Right. Now external Correct. storage is your your NAS devices, SAN devices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. you connect that to the physical server. Correct. Okay. So the VMware hypervisor. Mm -hmm. can recognize your mm -hmm. external storage devices which are connected to the physical server okay okay your ESXS server can talk to the nas okay, okay. and okay. consume the storage so this virtualization is capable of talking to the external storage devices and mm -hmm. make that storage capacity available for vms okay okay understood understood so uh, if I have to increase the capacity of disk, uh, I have to keep the uh, external uh, uh, NAS storage device or uh, uh, SAN, like, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. And in, in within the SAN, might be, uh, I'm asking the too early this question. Uh, hmm. In within the SAN, can we do the virtualization? Or is it required? Or might be my question is wrong? Storage virtualization is different. Software okay, defined storage. Okay. There is a okay. software defined storage. Okay. So we are talking about only the compute part. Compute exactly. part. Exactly. Got it. Got it. Okay. Because uh, the storage to, side, to... you have you have Itachi, NetApp. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have Different their own windows. yes. They have their own storage virtualization. Ah, got it, got it, got it. Uh, okay, they yeah, just yep. uh, to uh, highlight uh, a couple of issues pertaining to storage in the network we have seen Rahul Praveen if you remember mm. we uh, usually uh, come across uh, such incidents where storage was not able to connect or uh, there was there was issue with storage incident raised mm. that we cannot so basically it is nothing but computes cannot write to storage or come mm. connectivity between compute and the storage. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we lose some connectivity between compute and storage. These kind of incidents mm. we used to get uh, in our network. If you remember, right. storage can't be or storage problem. Hai. Uh, right. Ravi Kreja is our uh, storage expert. You know, guys. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> Hope you understood yeah. why I called him uh, expert. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Well, sir. Sorry for interruption. Hmm. I was just sort of correlating the thing, so it would. Yeah. yeah. No, no, Venkat, we are asking these questions because this is in this is a confusion in our mind. Okay, we might be probably we are working on the network platform since long, and we never get a chance to uh, look into the so virtualization or we are we are very curious and very confusion in my mind. Yeah, yeah, and that is the reason why I'm very patient to listen to your people. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's easy to understand when we are trying to correlate the real life exactly. problems with uh, what exactly. we are learning. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so, so any device, external devices, if they're being attached to the, the host that is a physical server, that can be managed by the operating system. Okay. Right. Okay, so we'll we'll just look at how to install ESXS server, then how to interact with ESXS server, then we'll talk about vCenter, how to uh, install vCenter, then uh, how to interact with the vCenter. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to install ESXi on a VM, but you should people assume that 
that we are installing an ESX server on a physical server. ESX server. Is that clear? Yes, yes, very much. Okay, now ESX, is it an operating system or is it an application? It is a uh, operating uh, means you know it is uh, on a physical host. It's operating mm -hmm. system. I operating would consider system. it as an hypervisor uh, or operating system. Virtualization OS. Yeah, hypervisor uh, is a general terminology given. Okay, but when you talk <laughs> about it, it's a virtualization operating system. Yeah. So, so the operating system should be installed. Host OS. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The call. So. So there are people call host server, physical server, host OS, hypervisor, or virtualization operating system. You can call it as host. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay. for the purpose of demonstration, I'm using, I'm going to deploy the ESXi server on a virtual machine. Okay, but uh, uh, you can assume that we are deploying it on a physical server. Is it clear? So don't get confused. Okay. So in a nutshell, I'm considering we are installing host operating system. Yes. So what happens is then uh, you will get the uh, a CD which you can download from the VMware website. Okay. Uh, typical like any Windows or any other operating system, how we get the uh, an ISO image, we get the ISO image. Okay. We can download from the uh, VMware website and we can basically do that. So uh, means uh, means uh, I'm just understanding, right? So Venkat, uh, I have a machine right now, right? And example, uh, you have a machine right now, and it mm -hmm. is having Windows. And on that mm -hmm. Windows, you are uh, uh, installing this uh, uh, operating means you know there will be two operating system. Means I'm just understanding, or how how we are, we are doing now. So, means uh, Venkat, probably the question is. Is hypervisor installed directly on the hardware or there is a base operating system and on that base operating system we uh, probably he's asking about type 1 and type 2 hypervisors. So yeah. we are installing the ESXi on a physical hardware directly. There is no middle layer in it. So no Windows, no no Linux, no, nothing. Directly no, nothing. Uh, directly ESXi on the uh, physical server. physical physical server okay so you might have heard a product called as a vma workstation okay okay that is we install it on another operating system like windows or linux so workstation usually we use for study purpose uh, uh, exactly but in, in in production we don't use vmware workstation right yes no So you accessed the V center, right? Uh, yes. Um, Venkat, if I do not have a suit, okay, so might be I do not have a VMware vCenter, okay, so in that case, uh, how do I install this particular uh, ESXi host? Physical server, right? You are going to de directly deploy in a physical server. Physical Keep server, but yeah. is there any kind of, uh, uh, is there any kind of uh, services running on the physical server which might be useful for the ESXi host installation or something like that? No, no, no. Okay. So, uh, in basic, uh, uh, we uh, in uh, standalone server, we do the uh, with the help of CD, right? Yes. Same CD way. Or USB. Same way. Exactly. Okay. Same way. The way okay. you install Windows XP, Windows uh, whatever Windows version, we install directly on the operating system when the computer starts. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, yes. it is always yes. better to have. 8 core or uh, more processor 16 core processor if we want to create virtual machines 
because uh, we assign cores to the virtual machines so for example mm -hmm. if we assign mm -hmm. four core to one virtual mm -hmm. machine then four core to mm -hmm. another virtual machine mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. way if you have eight core processor it will mm -hmm. uh, i mean you can you can have two core processors as well but mm -hmm. uh, one virtual machine whatever virtual machines you have those virtual machine consume your core core of the cpu mm -hmm. so 16 mm -hmm. core processor you can have uh, eight virtual machines of two core each mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what what i understood I right Yes, uh, Rahul. No, no. What I understood from Praveen's question is, I think how we install XP, right? Windows XP, example, or the same way Windows, you install so ESXi. Same, same, same way, same way we can install ESXi. Okay. Yes. And uh, right now, I think uh, what Venkat is doing, he is doing this through vCenter right now. And in vCenter, he is he's installing ESXi. Yeah, I said. I said. So VS, uh, yes, assume, assume that. Assume that it is a physical machine as of now. Don't get confused. What I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This this Got screen. It. You assume that it is a physical machine. That's it. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. okay. So generally, we burn. Uh, basically, you will have a DVD. So you insert a DVD. Then you start booting. Okay. Then uh, so once you boot from the DVD, you get this screen. So what is saying? So welcome to VMware vSphere ESXi 6.70 installation and basically enter to continue. Okay. Press okay. Enter so to continue. Yeah. We'll get one question as I just see here six seven eight right six point seven point eight. So so what means I uh, I don't want features uh, differences, but uh, any reason we are going for six point seven point eight means or or this is the latest version or. Uh, seven seven is the latest actually. Seven is the okay. latest. latest. Does it make any difference even if you use six point seven mm. for us at least? Okay. 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 So uh, I'm sorry, we're going to interrupting uh, Rahul yeah. and everyone. I mean, the way we use uh, we install uh, in old uh, days or even today also uh, the way we install Windows operating system we insert CD. And we go to CMOS and set uh, boot from CD, and we uh, install uh, the operating system from the CD drive. The same way we can install hypervisor or we can install ESXi operating system on the computer. But better if we want to do a home lab or lab at our own, we have a, a, a minimum eight core processor, 32 GB or 64 GB RAM to work it properly. And SD uh, SSD instead of HDD to have uh, good performance. Uh, am I right, Venkat? Yes, yes. Okay. Normal two uh, core, four core ka processor se kam nahi chalta. Actually, you will not be able to create more virtual machines and do a test. So you need to have at least of an 16 processors with 64 GB RAM to do some kind of an a testing or create multiple virtual machines in lab at, home. lab at home okay yeah. okay but and the good thing usually, part of good thing, yeah the good thing is then if you have one server you can play around it because of the virtualization you can create whatever platforms you want nsx or we realize or whatever cisco or ios or anything whatever you want to do it you can do it okay so um, uh, just one, one one question as you are installing this uh, uh, as uh, yeah there is a limitation because of individually we cannot have so much uh, high capacity server but uh, uh, from cloud services we can buy this you have a hosted labs actually from vmware okay yeah the the, the labs are hosted on the vmware website apart from that usually the second hand mm -hmm. servers which are sold by the organizations such as HDFC mm -hmm. Bank or anybody mm -hmm. yeah. who usually decom their servers after four to five years. So those are sold at a low cost. Just may mm -hmm. uh, we have 64 core of processors, one, uh, two TB, five TB. But again, uh, I was about to buy that. But since it when I'm running a server, it had generate it and it also need to have a data center kind of cooling. That's the reason I 
uh, dropped that idea to buy a second hand server. <laughs> So, so it will basically ask you to the disk here. So, yeah, um, just focus on this for the next 15 minutes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. No diversion. Okay. Otherwise, you'll miss the concept. Okay. Right. So, so what is going to ask you is then once you enter it, uh, accept the license and agreement, then uh, so it is going to show you the list of disks. Sometimes we might have multiple disks available on a server. So it's going to ask you on which disk you want to install the operating system. So as in this machine, I have only one disk, it's showing me one disk. So some for some reasons, if that server is already having an ESXi operating system, so it gives you a cross star mark as we would see here, a star mark says that on this particular disk, there is a ESXi host. By selecting that, it will ask you, do you want to upgrade the ESXi server? Do you want to repair the ESXi server? Or do you want to erase and install the ESXi server? Okay. So sometimes let's say the ESXi server is got corrupt and it is not coming up and running. So when we power on the physical server, the SXS server is not coming up and running. It is coming to a certain level and getting reboot. So something got corrupt. So in that point of time, we can select the particular disk and we can say repair. So when we say repair, the virtual machines will not be deleted. So the virtual machine files and everything will be as it is. Only thing is when it tries to repair the operating system, okay, without uh, erasing the configurations. Okay. For some reasons, you want to completely erase everything and reinstall it, then you can choose that option. But as this is a new mission, it is not going to come that options. So I'm just pressing an enter key to continue. This is a basically a keyboard layout, uh, normally, typically. Uh, I'll just enter it. Now it is going to ask you the password. So normally on a Windows machines, we see user account called as an administrator as a default. But when we are installing in Windows 10 operating system or Windows 8.1 or something, so after the post installation, it will ask you to create a user account and set the password. For ESXi, by default, the user account is a root, R-O-O-T. Okay, the default user account is a root, which has full privileges on the ESXi server. So we call that as an admin account. So during the installation time, it asks you to set up the password. Okay, so you can just set the password. So this password is required. Okay, to do that. So I'm press on enter key after entering the password. Okay. So it will basically set the password for the easy. Not saying confirm install. Okay. So the install is configured to install a success server. Press F11 to install. Just press F11. It hardly takes two to three minutes of time to install the ESX as well. It is not a very huge operating system like Windows or Linux. It is a simple because, as I said, they've removed every damn thing which is not required for hypervisor. They've kept only Linux OS for booting purpose and operating system of virtualization. So it only, uh, I would say, like an only when it has an operating system already available, then it gives you that boxes like, do you want to upgrade or repair or basically reinstall? Otherwise, a straightforward, simple installation of it. And this ESX 7.0 or whatever ESXi, when you sit in front of the server and see that, it doesn't have any graphical user interface. It's a simple uh, text in interface, okay? So that is the reason why it is very lightweight operating system, we call it as a very lightweight. We can run this ESX size on a USB pen drive, probably USB, okay? So we do instead of wasting the, like in uh, the disks, we can have like an, 
at a 10 GB or a 50 GB kind of an USB drive. You can put operating system in that. Your, you can boot your server using the USB okay, pen drive having the ESX servers. Okay. Yeah, it's completed. Let's reboot it. Um, one question, Venkat. Yeah. Uh, as you uh, said uh, during the installation phase, okay, if we have a one disk and ESXi is already installed, okay, on it, so it will give us an error or something like that warning that ESXi host is already installed, right? Yes, right. And let's say if we have a multiple disk, can we install multiple uh, ESXi instances on one no. hardware? No, only one. You can have one. Only you can have only one. Okay, got it. And one more question, uh, whether we are using a high-end server or the low-end server, okay, hardware, uh, this ESXi, uh, ESXi OS is going to take the same kind of memory because we are using the same package, the virtualization package from it, right? Yes, yes, Lina. yes. Okay. okay. It hardly consumes, uh, it needs a 2 GB RAM and uh, mm -hmm. two processors. That is the bare minimum required. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, based on the number of virtual machines we are going to keep, so the capacity mm -hmm. would differ. But for an ESX server, mm -hmm. it requires minimum of two processors with two GB RAM minimum. Okay. 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 Thank you. Right. Now this is the screen what we see after we install the ESX server. Please focus only on this thing. So assume that this is your physical machine. So, so you installed an ESX server on your laptop or on a physical server. So you see this screen. So it says ESXi, the release and war, and the, the number of processors available and the capacity of RAM available. To manage this host, go to this one. If the DSCP server is running in the network, it will automatically get an IP address from the DSCP server and provide you the IP address over here. As there is no DSCP running here, so it is not getting an IP address. Let me, maybe I have to connect this machine to a different network. Let me, okay. So it's giving the, the local IP. Um, then down, we can see a DSCP lookup file. It means that, as we will see, it is giving a message, DSCP lookup file, because it is not able to get the IP from the DSCP server. F2 customize the system view locks and F12 shut down. Okay. So when you press F2, so we can assign the IP address. It's asking you the login name and password. The password which we gave during the installation, you have to enter. Now, this is, it gives us a simple menu, like a BIOS menu. Normally, you might have people see in laptop BIOS or system BIOS, right? So it'll have similar kind of a menu. So this is ESXi menu. So what we can do here is then we cannot create virtual machines using this one. Okay, we can only assign an IP address, set the time zone, perform basic, very basic operations, change the password and everything. But by using this ESXi console, we cannot create virtual machines or anything. Okay, so that's specifically in, so I'm just going to a configure a network, just press an upper key, down arrow key, okay? And uh, you can see configure a management network. So you can just see the network adapters and you can assign the IP address. Okay, so this is only for a minimal or let's say initial configuration. I, uh, I of, want to give you a, initial configuration of ESXi, right? ESXi. Yeah, okay. okay. Let's go back to the 15 years back when we had a Cisco switch or a router or anything. So what we used to do, we used to have a console cable and we used to connect the router to the console 
to the laptop. Then we used to power on the Cisco device. Then, uh, so we used to assign the IP address and everything, correct? Yeah, right now also we are doing this. Okay. Yeah. So, so what happens there now? Once you assign an IP address, so do you use a console cable? Yes, yes. We don't we need to. If 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 we are locally doing, you know, we we can use the yeah. console. We have right. to use. So one. We have to use. So one, yeah. So once, let's say you are assigned an IP address to the device. Mm -hmm. No, can't we manage everything through remotely? Yes, yes, yeah. In yes, that case, right? yes, we manage. Yes. yes. Yeah. So mostly what is the so we initially for the initial configuration we use a console cable and in a case of the device is not reachable over the network again we go to the console correct and most That's of the times we don't prefer to go to the console cable because as long as it is reachable over the network we can manage it the same way ESX server also as long as it is accessible over the network we don't need to do that. That is the reason why first we'll come here for the initial setup. We assign an IP address. I'm just disabling the IPv6. You can enter the DNS later. Okay, just press escape to save the configurations. So it says configure network management. Say press yes. <coughs> now it is going to restart the emission. Right, so this is how the the ESXi will looks like. And so once after we do an initial configuration, it's giving to manage this host, go to the HTTP, this one. Okay. So initially for first time, we sit in front of the ESX server, we install it, ESX server. Then we basically configure the IP address and we leave it. So now we are out of the data center now. Okay. So let me go to this diagram. So now this is an ESXi server. So physical server installed with ESXi OS. And we give an assign, we assigned an IP address 19.168.70.155. Okay. We gave an IP address as 155. Now, what are the ways to interact with ESX server? So this is my PC. This is my PC. So from here, I use a web browser or the HTTP 
as I interact with ES6S1. This is my PC by using SSH. SSH, we can interact with the ESXS server remotely. So, once the ESXS server is bought into the network, <coughs> so from our PCs, from our PCs, we can basically directly use either HTTPS or SSH. So, I'm going to the browser. I'm saying 192.168.70.155. So as by default, it'll have a self-signed certificate. It gives you error. Just open it. And see that VMware ESXi. The VMware, VMware ESXi. So enter the root password. Whatever the password which you gave during the installation. Is this called a web login? Uh, yes, this is called as a web login. This is called we as a web login. We are directly managing the ESXi host. Exactly. We are not going to uh, we, we, we are directly uh, going to the ESXi yes. host. Yes, exactly. Okay. So this is called as a web login. Okay. So over the browser using an HTTPS protocol, so you can open any compatible browser. So either IE, uh, sorry, Edge, or uh, Chrome, or Mozilla would for, should work. In case if it is not compatible, it'll give you a message. So upgrade your browser or something like that, okay? So this is where we can see, okay? So we see a manage, and um, so by using the web login, you can create virtual machines, you can manage the storage, you can manage the networking on this ESXA server. So we can perform all the activities. We can reboot the ESXS server from here itself. Okay, so we can see a reboot, a shutdown, create a register, a VM, or basically get vCenter details, or whatever we can basically uh, storage and everything, which basically what we can see there. This is one way of interacting with ESXS server directly. Okay, so this is what we call as a web login or web access. So some people call it as web login, some people call it as web access to the specific ESXi server. So every ESXi server by default will have this one. So remotely, we can basically interact with this one. Okay. The other uh, method, what we do, uh, yeah. Uh, just one question, when you logged into that ESXi, right? So normally this ESXi was most, most, uh, mostly on the host machine. And uh, um, when you when you logged in, so uh, by default you you can able to see the memory and how much core it is, you know. So mm -hmm. by default, how it's how is taken, which uh, mm -hmm. means you can see how how it should be. What is it is for the host machine? Means yeah, here we can see. Right side you can see right. The yeah, CPU. So, so how 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 that that has been done means you know while while you do uh, initial configuration because it is taking something by, by default as well right no see normally operating system will consume certain resources right any operating system right right okay that is the, the minimal usage mm -hmm. okay it's saying used 1.3 gb i said 2 gb minimum required right okay mm -hmm. Two processors required, two GB RAM minimum required, and roughly around 10 GB of hard disk space it consumes maximum. Okay, but um, as you see that, okay, in memory, these are your capacities. So you have uh, 9.2 gigahertz of uh, capacity, you have 16 GB of RAM, 32.5 GB of hard disk capacity, physical capacities. Right. right. Okay. So now if I am going to create a VM, uh, hmm. I will create a VM of, uh, from this capacity means or uh, I mean, uh, I'll come. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll come. I'll come to that later. Okay. I'll, I'll explain that. I'll come to that later. Right. So let's understand now how do we interact with the ESXi uh, using the SSH. So you can use any putty or anything. Normal any SSH client tool. So by default, putty will be denied. Uh, I would say will be 
will be disabled. So you can use putty. So from administrator PC, I'm using a putty. So I'm using 19.168.70.155 and press open so by default i said putty is denied so it doesn't allow you to connect so when you install ESXS server for security reasons they don't allow the ssh they allow only http or https that is ssl web now i'm going to the ESXI server or a web or i go to the ESXS server So I'm going to the launcher console. So I'm going to the ESXS server. I'm logging into the ESXS server, the console. This is called a console. Generally, we use a terminology called as a console. The screen is called as a ESXS console. Okay, so I go to the troubleshooting options. Here we can see SSH. By default is disabled, just enable it. So right side you can see the status is enabled. Left side will be disabled, right side is enabled. Now press escape. Now it will saves the settings. Now we can use putty. So now it is going to do that. So now it is asking us the username and password root. Right. Now we can perform the administration activities using this command line. Uh, we can power off the virtual machines. We can manage a storage. We can manage a network. The only one option is not available here is that you cannot create a VM, but you can power off the VM, start the VM, Okay, we can manage virtual machines and do everything, but so the only option it doesn't have is a cre creation of a VM using this interface. But ideally we use this for troubleshooting purpose. Okay, sometimes if the GUI is not coming up, we want to reboot the server. Okay, or the virtual machines got hang and we want to reboot the server. From GUI, we are not able to do it. Then so we can log into the ESXS server using the SSH and we can perform the administration activities. So this, these are the three ways. One is a console. So the console is you can sit in front of the ESXS server, which we called as a console method. So and you can interact with the ESXS server and perform administration activities, basic administration, or by remotely, once you assign an IP address and log into the network, so you can log into the web and or ssh great so any other questions so far on, on this one before we move to the next step so for now what we did is we logged into the uh, esxi host hmm. for which we have given ip address 70 70.155 and from that hmm. Uh, th th we did the web login through web login. We launched the console because we are already into the ESX host. We could manage to launch the console and through console we enabled SSH. This is what I understood. Correct. Yes. Hmm. Okay. okay. And go ahead. Go ahead. So generally console you have to go to physically to the machine or <laughs> Uh, some like you might have heard something like a DRAC. Okay, mm -hmm. Dell DRAC or remote management tools are there. We can do that, but mm -hmm. assume that it is console is more of like a physical. So you go physically and do that. <laughs> okay, so no, but here in uh, we you we uh, we accessed mm -hmm. it uh, through HTTP colons. 
the IP address mm -hmm. of that. We got yes. into that uh, through web login mm. or web uh, web login. We get into it and we launched console. Can we launch console through vCenter as well? No. I think yes. No, no. Mm. See, in the lab, what is happening? Your ESXi is a VM, right? Mm. Here, the reason why VM. That's the reason why I'm able to launch the console. Okay. Through but in case yeah. Of, yeah, through in case of physical server, you will not be able to do a console. Okay. So, uh, Venkat, uh, there is no option to enable the SSH via the web client. You can do that. Not uh, you can do that. Okay. Okay. So not okay. necessary Service. to have a console, right? No. So here you see services. Go okay. to the okay. manage services. SSH. You'll see an SSH. Yeah, you can see SSH. Just select that and just say start. Okay, so here from here you got it. You can do it. Okay, from the web, go to the manage services, then you start the SSH. Okay. Are we clear on interacting with the SSH server? So you can you can interact with the web client or using the SSH. Okay. But SSH must be enabled. Uh, so first, if this is uh, installed first, I can access it through HTTPS only. And once I access through HTTPS and launch uh, console, then and then only I can enable SSH. Before that, we, right. I can't enable SSH. Yes, you're right. Yes. And one thing, okay, uh, we are here to cover the V center part. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover once we cover. Yeah, so yeah. in yeah. that V center part, I just non need to know uh, yeah. how it detects the ESXi servers. So that is the thing. Yeah, yeah. You would cover. Yeah, we'll cover. Okay, yeah. right. So now we'll talk about a simple one. Then we go to the virtual machines. This is your physical server. The physical server is having an 20 cores processor. It is having an 128 GB RAM. I would say one TB of disk, disk, one GB of Ethernet card, one GB of physical card, the NIC. So my question is, and can we go beyond the physical capacity? No, we cannot be, uh, no. go beyond physical capacity. So whatever whatever resources yeah. we have, we can allocate resources from that bank only. Yes. Okay. So here, what happens is, okay. See, at any given point of time, we cannot go beyond the physical capacities. Okay. The consumption, the physical, as long as the physical capacities are not consuming, hundred percent, we can do anything. But if the physical capacities are coming to the 100%, then we cannot go beyond that. But what is happening in a virtualization? So I'm creating a virtual machine. So this virtual machine, can I allocate a process, 32 process? No. I cannot allocate a 32 process to this. No. Okay. Physically, you have 20 processors, 20 cores. So maximum, you can allocate up to 20 cores. Okay, as the physical is having a 20 cores, that is the maximum capacity. For this particular virtual machine, 
you can allocate up to 20 cords but so this is a vm i'm creating a vm with the 20 cords but like this i can create four virtual machines i can create four virtual machines with 20 cores 20 cores 20 cores 20 cores but total how many cores at the virtual side it appears to be uh, 80 cores but only one virtual machine if in that case only yeah. one virtual machine would be able to consume uh, if one virtual machine is consuming 20 cores then rest of the th three vms won't be able to consume th those uh, the cores allocated to them right yeah so what is happening here you have an 80 cores available so you allocated 80 cores to the virtual machines but physically you have 20 cores the cores are not reserved to the virtual machines it means that if the first machine is there all the capacity is not reserved it so the physical capacity is being shared across virtual machines. So they are being shared across the, the physical uh, virtual machine. The physical capacity is being shared. So if this is consuming only a 5% of the 20 cores, this can consume 10%, this can consume another 10%, this can consume another 10%. When these three virtual machines are idle, this can consume up to 20 cores, 100%. 20 percent uh, so this 20 quotes can be this vm can use up to 100 percent when all these three vms other vms are not in use when all the four vms are in use so the the physical processors will be shared among all these virtual machines so in this case okay based on the the number of requests coming from the virtual machines the esx server will allocate the processing power to them so you can create more number of virtual machines with the same capacity like in 80 cores but one single vm cannot cross the the physical capacity so same thing with the vm uh, sorry sorry yes, to disturb you so uh, uh, is there any priority uh, based as a, a, a location of the processor for the vms or it's a fifo like what's come for this is the, the default is FIFA. You still have an option of priorities. You can okay. set priorities like high, medium, low. Okay. okay. You okay. still have an option of priorities, but the default is in FIFO. FIFO. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Similarly, I'm creating a NIC card. So this virtual machine is having a NIC card of 1 GB. 1 GB NIC card, 1 GB NIC card, 1 GB NIC card, 1 GB NIC card. But your physical NIC is only one NIC. So when four virtual machines are communicating with the physical network, will they get 4 GB or 1 GB? So the, the physical NIC is only 1 GB capacity. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, uh, it's only 1 GB, not more than that not more than that okay so when they are basically the vms are the physical it goes to the physical the maximum capacity is only one gb you create 200 virtual machines like this with one gb one gb but all these 200 virtual machines will share only one gb nick card are we clear on this okay so this is how so the resources will be shared okay so I'm going to one terminology you need to understand. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, just one question. So now here in this case, 20 cores, I have available 20 cores. I have allocated five uh, uh, five cores to each virtual machine, which, uh, which is uh, 20 cores. Now each machine mm. is restricted mm. or each machine I have allocated uh, five uh, cores. Now if first of the machine, first of the virtual machine is willing to consume more because uh, now um, uh, there are 15 cores and out of those 15 cores second virtual machine mm. second virtual machine is not using it all its four cores so can can first virtual machine machine go beyond five cores if each uh, each vm is 
allocated five cores. So uh, total 20 cores and we have just allocated those 20 cores, not more than that. No over subscription I'm using. In that case, if first virtual machine is using five cores and it need more cores. So and second uh, second virtual machine is not using anything. In that case, will it go beyond five cores if I have aligned it only to use five cores? And uh, su subsequently, the same same thing applicable to uh, uh, RAM. If 32 GB of RAM is uh, allocated to the first virtual machine, will it go beyond for 32 GB if required and if available? Okay. Okay. See, you are saying five cores. Well, yeah. Let's say we can. A virtual five, machine is created with uh, five cores. That's it. For this virtual machine, what is the hardware capacity? As far as process is considered, six core, correct? Six core, yeah. So can you can it go beyond? Can it can the operating system sitting inside the virtual machine can it recognize more than six cores? If if those are available, no. Uh, okay, so no, operating no, system no, no, that no, is no. guest operating system. See? see, exactly the guest operating system yes. for this particular virtual machine. What is the maximum number? What is the processor capacity? Six core. Six cores. So the operating system which is sitting inside will see only six cores. So it will only consume up to six cores. Got, got it. Exactly. Okay. Whatever capacity you allocated, that is the capacity to the guest operating system, guest OS. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So it cannot go beyond that. When you want more capacity, you need to add to Two more processors. You need to increase the capacity. Okay, and that can okay. be done on the fly. We don't need to even on RAM uh, allocating mm -hmm. uh, additional RAM instead of 32 yes, allocated. Yes. I want to allocate 64. That can be done on the fly. No need to mm. bring down the virtual machine. In that case. Yes. Okay. We need to enable certain features for that. Okay. So you can do it on the fly if the licensing is enabled. If license is not available, then you cannot do it on the flight. Okay. 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 Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Right. So, like this, the hardware capacities will be present. Now, there will be one terminology you need to understand. People will use a terminology called as a data store. So, in ES68, basically, it's used terminology called as a data stores. Data store is nothing but a local desk or external storage used for virtual machine files. We call it as a data store. So either it could be a local disk which is existing on the ESX server or it could be external storage, a NAS storage or a SAN storage or everything which is used for virtual machine files. So most of the people will be calling data store data store the server T that is nothing but a storage. Okay, so you can call this as basically a storage for the virtual machines. Now I'm coming to the point. Now we are calling virtual machine. Virtual machine is a set of files. It is a set of files. So it is a software. It is not a hardware. So it is a set of files. The ESX size server will create a folder in the data store on the name with the name of with the name of virtual machine. It creates creates various files. The first file is in VM name dot VMX file. VM name dot VMDK file. VM name dot log file. VM name dot NVRAM file 
VM name dot lck file like there are a couple of files which gets created this is just for one so, virtual machine right this is this is for, for one virtual machine every virtual machine have, will have these files yes different file different files every virtual machine will have their own individual files okay so ESXi will create a folder for every virtual machine. Inside that folder, it will have these files. The files to file is then is called as a configuration file. Configuration file. So this is, has an information like how many process allocated, capacity of RAM allocated, how many CD ROMs allocated, disk controllers, network controllers, okay, like in USB controllers. Basically, more of like an hardware information is available under this particular file. And the name of the virtual machine, VM, and other things. Right? So, this file is very important. So when you power on the virtual machine, the SXI will read the configuration from this VMX file. Will read the configuration from this VMX file. And will understand how many processes are being allocated, what is the capacity of RAM allocated, how many hard disks are being allocated, and uh, how many Ethernet controllers, ca Ethernet cards are being allocated and what model and everything. So uh, this configuration file plays a key role. OK. And you are this file, uh, uh, yes. this file is in readable format or? Uh... Yes, it is in readable format. You can edit this in a notepad. OK, OK. okay. Whoever is not speaking can yeah. so, please go so, on mute. So, so if I want to change the capacity, I can change into this file as well. Means uh, if I, I, no, I edit no, no. the file. No, editing of this file is not recommended. Editing of this file is not recommendable. Only X required times. Yes, you can manually edit this file and change it. But requirement is not recommendable to edit this file. Whatever you want to do it, you do it through the GUI. vCenter. Web vCenter or web client. Okay. But for troubleshooting purpose, yes, sometimes we edit this file. Okay. Right. And we have an, a file called as a VMDK file. This is a virtual hard disk. This is a virtual hard disk. So operating system and applications will be stored inside this file. This is your whatever guest operating system and applications which are installed on that virtual machine are stored in this particular file. So this is called as a VMDK file. This is like your disk, hard disk. This is a log file. So basically it records all the activities. It records all the activities. NVRM file is a BIOS file. So the virtual machine also it is a machine, that's it. It should have a bias. So this is a bias, okay? So when you first power on the virtual machine, so the bias will be executed. This is an, this is an unreadable format file, binary file. We cannot read what content is there. That is just a binary file. So it's going to get executed. So as soon as we power on the virtual machine, the bias file, like it's good and read the configurations and everything, it'll boot the operating system file. Okay. 
So there is a lock file, LCK file. When a virtual machine is being powered on, it'll create this file. It'll create this file when VM is powered on, indicating that the virtual machine is in power down state and locked by the ESXi host. Okay. There are so many other files which gets created, but these are very important files. The VMX file, VMDK file, NVRAM file, and log files. Okay. So for each and every virtual machine, it is going to create these files. Okay. Right. So I'm just going to the ESXi server. The root. Venkat, one question on the fly. Mm. Uh, mm. So you mentioned uh, the VMDK, that is hard disk. Mm. We have the guest mm. operating system, we have the application file, but the application data, is it stored in the data store only or it is stored somewhere else? Mm. Or in the VMDK, VMDK file, file world, I, to be honest, uh, to be clear, it's in VMDK file. So whatever application data is there, that is uh, written in the VMDK only. Mm. Yes. Stored. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It is everything, whatever virtual machine related, anything the guest is being stored in the VMDK file. Okay. Clear? Okay. Thank right. You. So I'm just selecting a virtual machine. I'm creating a new virtual machine. Create or register a virtual machine. Create a new virtual machine name of the virtual machine. So I'm just giving VM1, okay. Compatibility, yes, XI 6.7, okay. Whatever, if it is an, if your VM want to be compatible with lower versions of ESXi server, then you can create. What operating system you are planning to install inside this virtual machine. Based on that, the hardware configurations will be created, okay. Like a Linux or a Mac or other or Windows, I'm saying Windows what version of operating system you are planning to install inside this one. It is not going to install operating system, okay? You have to install it, but the hardware components will be created, okay, which are compatible to this particular operating system. So let's say I'm saying Windows 10, or let me take Windows Server 2016 or later. Okay. So data on which data store you want to create? So the data store capacity is 31 GB. Okay. So the free capacity is 31 GB. So you can create virtual hard disk on this one. So the disk size specified is greater than, so it means the disk is capacity. Now this is a virtual machine hardware. How many CPUs you want to allocate to the virtual machine? How much capacity of RAM you want to allocate to the virtual machine? How much capacity of disk you want to allocate? I'm just giving a 20 GB, just for the sake of testing purpose, okay? So 20 GB. Then SCSI controller cards, network controller card, okay? And CD-ROM drive and video graphics card, like what are all hardware it is basically requires and what are those capacities? So click on next, just summarize it and finish it off. Now, this, does this VM have an guest OS? Or does it just an Not empty way, VM? It's, Not an empty VM. Empty it's just it's an empty one. It's just an empty machine. It's just like you bought a laptop from your hardware showroom. Okay? It's just like if you bought a hardware from your showroom. But I think, uh, Venkat, you selected the guest OS as a Microsoft Windows Server. Yes, so what does I'm telling that I'm going to install the uh, Windows Server into this VM. So what okay. ESX will do is um, it will create the network card and everything which is compatible for that operating system. Right? <coughs> now I'll tell you why it is that. Now, I go to this machine. When I go to the network card, you have some different models, right? So you see like in... Uh, uh, Intel, D-Link, Realtek, something. These are your hardware devices. Now these you are compatible based on the operating system to operating system. Similarly, when you're creating a virtual machine, when you choose to create an 
virtual machine for a specific OS, it will going to create a compatible hardware for that virtual machine. Okay. So which is compatible for that operating system. Is it clear? Yeah. Now I'm creating an another virtual machine. Uh, I'm saying VM2. Guest OS, I'm saying a Linux. What was I'm saying send OS Linux something? Uh, and which data store? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, uh, here, if I don't want, I want this hypervisor or I want this ESX host purely to be the compute and storage, I want it to somewhere else. So, how can I mention that uh, the storage on the ba back? Uh, how can here, I? You, will, you have to configure that. Okay. Yeah. And if I configure network configure. file storage here, then network storage to some different uh, uh, a network storage. In that mm. case, I have the option while creating VM to select that network storage. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So in the storage, you need to add it. Okay. This is a local storage as of now. Data yeah. store one. Like this, you can add multiple data stores. Okay. So during the creation of virtual machine. So you select on which storage you want it. So I'm giving VM2. So I'm selecting a Linux. I'm selecting in some CentOS. Next, here you select on which data store you want to be. That is your storage. So I'm selecting a local storage. So I'm saying processor one disk. I'm giving an FIGB of our disk space to the don't have the physical capacity. So it is giving me that. So a network card. Just next and just say finish. Okay. Where I can see now the available resources because the two VMs consumed some resources. One VM consumed two cores or the another VM consumed uh, one more core. So how much is the available resources now free? Okay. Mm. 32.5 GB storage and you have storage 26.41 is consumed. But uh, uh, record. This is a, mm. a provision not not in use, right? Yes. So uh, the storage uh, uh, it should ideally shows the what is the use use, right? Not configured, right? No, but that it is actually should... allocated to the virtual machines and that cannot be used now. Even if there is nothing in that storage, if the VM is not using any of the storage, but that is allocated to that virtual machine. And now we can from this ESXi host, this is a bank and we can av uh, allocate from available resources to the new VMs. We cannot use that VM. Okay, so this particular window is showing the available resources. Okay, uh, for the configuration which for new new virtual machine, you can allocate uh, from free. You cannot allocate okay. already which is consumed. Okay. Sorry, when yeah. to interrupt, yeah. but uh, no, no, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, let me clarify a few things. The processor and memory will be consumed only when you power on the VM. Okay, so when I power on the virtual machine, when we power on the virtual machines based on the guest operating system and applications, it will start showing the consuming. consuming. Okay, so as of now, even though if I create a 10 virtual machines, it will show me like this only because they are not powered on. Okay. When a VM is powered off, okay, it doesn't consume the processor and memory, but still the disk is there, right? The disk has the data, right? Some operating system and then, okay. Correct. Now there are two ways of disk actually. One is that during the creation of a virtual machine, you can say that Allocated is 40 GB, but as I install, as I consume the space, you consume the space. Okay, so we can define that as I consume the space, you consume the space. It means that I create allocated as a 40 GB, but I consumed only 1 GB. In that case, it shows you as a 1, 1 GB as a consumed. But as I start installing the applications and everything, it keeps growing up to 40 GB size. The second option in a disk is a virtual machine disk. 
allocate and consume the disk. What does it mean? It? I'm creating a virtual machine of 40 GB and I'm going to consume that 40 GB. It means reserve to that virtual machine. Now here, what is the actual capacity here? 32.5 GB. Now I have virtual machines. So I'm just deleting this virtual machine. I'm deleting this virtual machine, both virtual machines. Now you see the capacity. What is the user capacity? 1.41 only. But now I'm creating a virtual machine. VM1. On this data store. So I'm giving hard disk as a 8 GB. I'm giving a hard disk as an 8 GB. So default, what it does is then, you see that 8 GB is consumed or not? It creates, it allocates 8 GB and consumes 8 GB. That's it. Okay. During the creation of a virtual machine, I'm giving VM2. I'm giving Windows Server data store. So I'm giving a hard disk. I have a thin provision. Okay. So what does this will do, Osan? It'll create it allocates 8 GB, but it will not consume 8 GB. It will consume based on the actual consumption. Now we created a second VM. Does it consume anything space here? No. It was 8 GB so, only. So when you start installing the okay. yes, thin provision. So what happens there is then so when you start installing operating system into that VM, it'll start consuming the space on the data store. Like that, you can create a number of virtual machines. Okay. Right. So, so what, you what basically you uh, I'm sorry, what did you do? Because it, it consumed second VM you created, you mentioned thin provision. When the first uh, first VM you created, what you mentioned instead of thin provision, you mentioned something thick, else. Thick, provi thick, thick okay, provision. Thick provision, right, thick provision, it is reserved for that VM. Thin provision, it is not yes. reserved, but uh, hmm. it start consuming uh, the moment we yeah, start installing the applications. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So now you have virtual machines. So when you go to the virtual machines, these are your list of virtual machines. Okay. You will be able to see the status and how much memory they're consuming it, how much processing capacity they're consuming and the physical capacity. Okay. And hard disk, how much is being used. Okay. All these things which you would be able to, okay. See it. Okay. Then uh, you just click on that. You see a power on, powering on a virtual machine. Okay. You go that it opens a window. This is a cons this is a VM. Now, as we would see a VM, this is just like a machine, a console. Okay, as it doesn't have any operating system, this is a BIOS is basically giving it you. Okay, so you can manage power off and power off the virtual machines and power on the virtual machines and everything, but you can do it. Okay, so this is your ESXi and on top of that, virtual machines like that. Okay, now in order to install the OS, so do we get ISO images or not? Do we need a CD ROM? Okay. Yes, so, we see, need ISO. ISO image. so ISO image is just a DVD image, right? That is a virtual DVD, correct? 
there is a virtual if you like i so image there is a virtual cd rom or virtual cd i would say virtual dvd yes, so what yes. we can do is then so, so you can go to the vm actions so any point of time you can basically increase the resources by going to the edit settings okay so you can increase from one processor to two processor okay save it okay so you can basically edit settings the virtual machine will have the cd rom you see so the data store iso file or a hosted device okay so you can attach the iso file let me upload an iso file to the data store so i'm going to the data store browse this data store browser so you can uh, see a vm1 vm2 that's it what we are doing now we are installing i'll just show you we are installing a bridge i'll show you the virtual machine files okay so i'm going to the mm -hmm. storage uh -huh. data store browser you see two folders how many vms we created two two so first vm name we gave vm1 second vm name we gave so it is creating a folders click on this folder you see vmx file log file vmdk file and vram file which one is hard disk here virtual hard disk vmdk 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 which one is bias file uh, nvram it's nvram correct vmx file is your configuration file okay similarly you go to this one you see vmdk file vmd file vmx file once you power on it will create this nvram file okay now what i'm trying to do is then so i want to install operating system so i'm going to the data store browser i am uploading an iso file into the storage so click on upload so i have some uh, windows click on upload you are upload uploading this. from your laptop right yes okay i am uploading from my laptop So, when it in the real time scenario, where will be your uh, operating system? So, it will be on your uh, hypervisor. It will not be on a hypervisor, right? So, from where you will then upload? Then, what it? we will do is then we will create a one NAS shared folder. We'll keep all the ISO files in the NAS together. And your NAS folder will be connected with your hypervisor, I believe. Map with your hypervisor. Yes, something. Exactly. Okay. Yes, the NAS will be mapped to the hypervisor. Here we will be able to see that data store. Okay, okay. So that we can learn later, right? How to map these uh, external things with hypervisor. Yeah, yeah, you have to, yeah, yeah. You have to that as part of this course we will not talk. Okay. We are okay. NSX. Okay. Uh, probably this so, is not part. Yeah, Venkat, I, I have one query here. Right now, what we are doing, we are just uh, getting that those particular files into the VM means uh, because I thought you know it will be already integrated. Means I, I can see in no. database you are uploading basically. Uh, can you just the operating uh, system. Yeah. Operating no, system. No, uh, Rahul, what happened? Na? Okay, during VM creation, okay, they just mm -hmm. selected the flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have right. not uh, uh, put the ISO file. Okay, okay. Now we are putting the ISO file. Same like okay. we are uh, uh, doing the uh, any OS installation. Okay, uh, or let's say on the router we putting the uh, any ISO uh -huh. file. So, so like it that. means like VM one can be uh, Windows, VM two can be Linux like that, right? Yes, yes, right. Yes, yes. yes. And whatever hard disk space we have allocated to it, we are we are uh, we are uploading that uh, ISO file in that uh, VMDK, right? Uh, if I'm not wrong. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, ISO file is only OS file, so we need to install, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So we'll use ISO file to install the operating system. So once the operating system is being installed, then that installed operating system will be there in the VMDK file. Okay. okay, so ISO file okay. is your only in a DVD that right. is consisting of yeah. operating. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to the VM. 
a VM one. So I'm selecting actions, edit settings as we uploaded an ISO file. So I'm going to the CD-ROM drive here. I'm selecting a data store ISO file. Here we can see the file ISO file, which we uploaded. Just mm. select that file, connect it. If you don't connect it, what happens? It doesn't boot. Okay, connect it and say save. Now, what are we trying to do here now? We are mapping in an ISO file to the virtual machine to install operating system. Did we install operating system? Not yet. No, not yet. No. Not yet. Huh. We just attached an ISO file to the virtual machine to install operating system, right? Now, I'm selecting this virtual machine, power on the virtual machine. Now it will automatically boot from the ISO image. Can you show it for VM2 as well? Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. The way you did it for VM1. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to the VM2. Venkat, one that question. Uh, during creation of this VM, okay, mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. select the flavor that we will going to install the Windows uh, or we will going to install the Linux, okay? Uh, so mm -hmm. as per the flavor, okay, we have to do the same or we can swap uh, on the Windows. I can uh, install the Linux like that. We can install the different one also, but there will be an hardware issues for that virtual machine. Okay. That guest OS. Okay. okay. So the okay. recommended okay. is in whatever the flavor you selected, you install the uh -huh. same operating system. Okay. okay. Because okay. it's going to create a compatible virtual hardware. Got it, got it. Okay. So I'm I'm selecting the second virtual machine. Go to the It will actions. give an error in that time, right, Venkat? It will not give error, but it will install, but it will give you, maybe that hardware will not function as you expected. Okay, that might be some feature loss or something like that, okay. Exactly, that can say. exactly. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I'm going to the CDROM drive. I'm selecting a data store ISO file. Select the ISO file which you uploaded. Connect. It's a save. Okay. So now you can power on this VM. Then it'll start basically installing. The rest every same. So you, you don't see any difference. Now can can we check the resources uh, the host uh, on the host? We can we check resources utilized. Now it is showing CPU gone up to CPU increase. Memory, also, is memory also increased. Okay. Now but storage I'm is going same. to the yeah. Storage will be the same. So once you start installing the VM, you see second one. Your storage will got in, will get. So I'm just installing next install there's no difference now whether you're installing in a virtual machine or a physical server or a physical machine there's no difference once you mount the iso image and start installing it is the same yeah, it is not detecting the hard disk the reason why you see that I think I'm not sure what I selected here. Uh, what guest OS we selected for this one? I did. Believe we selected sent OS that time. No, that is for the VM 22. 22? No, that's one. Here for VM 1, VM 2, both uh, the windows. Yeah, we, we selected Windows Server 2003. Okay. Yeah. So we are installing Windows Server 2008. The hard disk which is created for this one is not compatible with Windows 8. Okay. okay. That is the reason why it is giving a problem. Okay. 
and the rest everything is the same just you need to let's take this console so so it right. gave error because it, it it was not mapped right it's ultimately that window is yeah right. yes that disk is not compatible for that one okay. because the flavor we selected was windows uh, i believe it was windows 2003 we have selected 16 Three. we have selected right? yes. whatever and no, it no, was... no, we are selected windows about 2003 and we are trying okay. to install windows 8.1 okay that's the, so the hardware device changes. which is come created yes let me power off yeah. so once you power off you can see the console resource consumption will come down automatically. Now we have powered up one VM, it came to 2.6. Now both the VMs got powered off. So 2.6, uh, it may it come how down can, up to some point of How we can check the storage we have selected as a thin provision or thick provision? Go to yeah, you can go to the VM, edit settings. Actions. Anything actions edits or anything to the <clears throat> anything which you allocate, you go to the settings, go to the disk, expand this disk. Here it says thick provisioned, like this. Okay, okay. So if you go to the VM2 actions, edit settings disk thin provision okay if we want to change this then we have to power off right first then we can change it then we can yes. again power on no but you cannot change it you cannot yeah, edit change is, this one. edition is not possible you have to create new one right thick one, provision or thin provision you cannot can't change, be changed change you cannot change the disk once it is created okay you cannot change from thin to thick thick to thin Okay, during the creation only you can choose it. Okay. Oh, capacity okay. can be changed on the fly. I mean, RAM, uh, yeah. the RAM, RAM you can yeah. yeah, you can add one more hard disk. You can increase uh, processor's memory and everything. Okay, but only the disk you cannot convert from the thick to thin, thin to disk, thin to thick after creation. Yeah. Again, we can we have right. a combination like thick and thin both for a single beam? Yes, 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 you can have it. One disk you can have it as a thin, one disk you can have it as a thick. Okay, okay. And also, Pankat, uh, but he asked for the same virtual machine. For same virtual machine, can we have the question was uh, for the yeah, same virtual machine? Yes, can yes, we yes, have yes, thick? Yes, 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 yes. How, how, okay, how yes, yes. it will be thick and thin? Then how it will be used? Because uh, if uh, no, see, for are, operating system, you're going to use a thin. Yeah, let's say you have two disks, one for operating system, one for application. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'll create a two disks, one for operating system, one for uh, application. So for operating system, you give it as an uh, thin provisioning. For application, you give it as a thick. Or for operating system, you give it as a thick. For application, you give it as a thin. Okay, 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 got it, got it. Generally, operating and system disk will be less. Uh, okay. Application disk will be larger, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and if we have a scenario, like, uh, say, suppose we have three VMs and we have three uh, 30 GB, 30 uh, GB of the storage, one VM is configured with the uh, thick the thick uh, storage with, with 10, 10 GB allocated to them and other with the thin. So for mm -hmm. thick, there will be 10 GB reserved and uh, for other two, uh, the 20 GB will be as per the uh, consumption, right? Yeah, physical consu uh, consumption, that's it. Okay, and they will follow the FIFO again. Exactly. Okay. okay. Now, at any given, let's say physical disk got uh, full, then those two VMs cannot scale consume the space because the physical capacity is full, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Right. So we'll stop here for today.
tomorrow we'll understand vsector and network okay. yeah we get one last question mm, yes yes this is regarding a log files so suppose uh, on, on a single vm i'm launching a cisco router or the switch okay so the logs for the cisco router and the switch will be uh, to the snmp no, no, server no, no. or will be in the log file no no this log file is only related to the hardware vm, VM. Hardware. not related to your right. application yeah. so that log file that will be like... having the logs for uh, your vm and your hypervisor communication exactly okay thanks inside thanks. the vm dk file the other log file will be available okay so th that will be in storage you mean to say okay exactly hmm? okay vm dk file hmm? okay got it got it hmm? okay so this log uh, file what can... is the contents uh, in the log file means uh, is it for some of the uh, for any kind of locking or what is the use of that no no it is it is basically text. purely when it, uh, when it is being powered on when it is being powered off any resources changes Yes, exact communication that all will be there in that log file. Looks like see same like this log, right? Uh, Pravin, maybe yeah. so like probably uh, used for us uh, for attack to troubleshoot <laughs> or to uh, yes, find out the uh, no, no. Uh, I, I'm not uh, talking about the log file, I'm uh, talking about log log LCK LOC LCK 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 is a log actually. Log is only a, whether the VM is in a power down state or a power off state. Okay. okay so okay. what happens okay when vm is a power down state it creates a dot lck <laughs> file understanding that it is a power down state mm -hmm. okay so okay. when the vm has been powered off then the lck file will be deleted automatically okay okay so this file is only for the information purpose that's it it is not having any significance to, uh, to reboot no, no, or no. any changes nothing no 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 nothing nothing oh, oh, got it other than that uh, um, uh venkat would you mind uh, uh, will you please uh, save the file which you have created the powerpoint file because yeah, yeah, it. Uh, it has it. a valuable information yeah, yeah. and uh, which would help yeah. us yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Always so, so, Venkat, uh, so the, we will be uh, means uh, just wanted to understand so what uh, will be the pattern. So, so we will be getting this uh, uh, recording as well and also the uh, yes, practice yes. for the labs as well, right? Yes, yes. Recording will be available there if mm -hmm. you want to have access near in future. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, it was indeed a nice session. Um, Venkat, but uh, yes, we would uh, definitely want to install it at our own um, the ESX yeah. server. Even though that is that won't be needed in the, the even if uh, it's not regular practice, we would we would need to install the virtual machine or install a VSX server. But we'll have uh, practice once or twice. <clears throat> and uh, for me, oh, it was enough. a nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, but Venkat, so, really, this is nice session, and uh, uh, we, uh, I really uh, confused about this VMware. Okay, since last seven eight years, and lot of confusion got uh, yeah. uh, cleared now. Cleared now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you. So, thank Venkat, you uh, to, to you. tomorrow, tomorrow at what time we will be meeting? Means I just wanted to understand. Seven eight, 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 seven eight, eight, seven. Seven. No, no, seven. Seven to ten is the fixed. Okay. 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 So uh, this session, uh, Kapil, yeah. this session is for the Saturday Sunday for how many weekends? Five to six. Uh, uh, five weekends, minimum five weekends you can take it. Okay, next Maximum five weekends. Go six. Yeah. So next five by weekends, what time this uh, recording session will be available? So uh, mostly end of the day they will upload. Let's say today is completed. Okay. Because, By end of the day, uh, my are... one of friend is not able to attend this today's session, so he can go through today's session and okay. he can join from tomorrow. That's why. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll inform Triveni. She can basically upload it and she can give the login details actually. Okay. 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 Uh, so, uh, Venkat, I know that uh, at the at the start you mentioned that by this you can't go for certification and all. But however, can you also just give some glimpses? Maybe not. Maybe not today or tomorrow about certification path for NSX mm -hmm. means uh, uh, that will be helpful. Yeah. 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 Right? Sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah right. That is the uh, very good question. Actually, uh, I supposed to ask the same question because we don't know the certification path for the VMware. Yes, yeah, especially. Okay. I'll, I'll basically, we will, yeah, we'll talk about in one of the sessions. No problem. Uh, Venkat, does uh, really and in, in, in the market as of now in the market, does really that the certification of VMware NSX or uh, the VCP NV? Does it really matter or knowledge would uh, also suffice or it has the kind of the kind of value we have for CCI certification? Uh, does that NV uh, VCP NV carry the same sort of value? It carries uh, in uh, outside of India, but in India we more look at technicalities right rather than certificates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, the kind of session you delivered today, uh, uh, Venkat, maybe uh, yeah. uh, an additional session we may, uh, or uh, it may get extended but for, with NSX. Uh, I'm, I'm not expecting anything else. I mean, the uh, the learning yeah. and all those things that, that I'm not expecting, which is yeah, not yeah, yeah. Possible, But at least whatever uh, with respect to NSX, that uh, if, I mean, we need the same way we, you delivered it today. Uh, we are expecting. Yeah. Yes, I promise you that. Okay. Yeah, they said I will not rush. Okay, until you people understand it. Yes, okay. Yeah. I think uh, I think you got okay. uh, who that are your audience, right? So so uh, we are the audience. Yeah, where yeah. We came to know hypervisor today. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know. I understand. Otherwise, if I start NSX, uh, the third class you'll not be presenting in this session. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah. correct. So, so basically, you... this this was much needed, Venkat. Uh, won't taking yeah. much of time, but yes, this was much needed to understand what we are going to do. What is that? Now, yeah. at least everyone yes. is at a level where who uh, everyone knows what is physical server. What is hypervisor above that physical server and what are the guest operating system? What are the host operating system? These are uh, very much necessary things. So thanks for that. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Venkat. Thanks, thanks for your time. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Let's, thanks. Let's yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye bye, tomorrow. guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Venkat. Bye.